bite is good, the eyes are dark, it's a hell shimmel. Everything on the, all the attributes on the dog, uh, she's a compact uh, dog with a lot of substance. If you look at it, the dogs, look at the bones on it, you can see it on the, the way the dog is structured. Uh, on the gate, it's basically, she's, she's got the perfect gate. Everything's very good. They, they really like the, the looks of the dog and, uh, how do I say it, big eyes for it. <laughs> Enthusiastic. They're really uh, very enthusiastic about this dog and they, they just really like the dog and we, we really need to encourage this man to breed that dog because they said this is, a, this is really something for our future right here. As a result, we have a V in type, we have an SG in the, in the form and we have an SG in the hair. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Good, Good job. My name's Herman Rowling, um, currently president of uh, DLGNA, that's Deutsch Lange Group North America. Uh, the way we started this was, I think 1991 is when I uh, had my first German long hair pointer. I hunted with a friend of mine up in Wyoming for sage grouse and I came across that dog and I was totally impressed with uh, the pointing skills and uh, you know some of the some of the skills that that dog showed in the field and also in the water and in other different locations I went out and tried to find a pup that basically resembled the same uh, attributes as this dog did and uh, I ended up with my first German long hair pointer you look at them, to me, they, they look like they're all based on, on setters at one point, but, but they're built a little stockier than most of your setters. The reason why they have the fur is so they can get into some of the real thorny thickets and, and grows like they have over in, the, in the, the northern part of Germany, and that's where they're all from originally. The other thing that, that they were uh, bred for is for the love of water because there's a lot of water over there for waterfall hunting. I had stories where they would jump in the river or retrieve a duck and come back a mile and a half down down the river and bring the duck back or you actually even go under ice pick up the duck come on the, out on the other side you know. There's some stories that uh, about the retrieving of those uh, of those dogs, the retrieving skills that are phenomenal. I was uh, trying to figure out how uh, we could establish that breed in the United States, and we looked into uh, what it would take to become, you know, a breeder for that for that type of dog. It took me 11 years before I had a pair that was certified to Germany that I could actually breed. And that was, that was the beginning of, uh, of the breed over here. After about, I think we had about two or three litters, we decided to, to get together with a bunch of people that we sold dogs to and we started uh, what now is DL Fest. We, we met in, in Kansas and got together and talked about do we want to have uh, some sort of a, a breeding group like they have in Germany for all the different, different states and things like that. I went to Germany, asked for permission to start a group over here and they explained to me what I had to do and and in 2008, they sanctioned us to have the first group in the United States. So we're really the only group uh, of Deutsch Lamher outside of Germany. I'm Deb Mella, and I am the DLGNA club secretary. We have been involved with um, the breed for just about 11 years now. I didn't have any hunting experience 
prior to getting our dog. I was excited to have a dog that could be at home and we could have as a companion, uh, but hunting certainly wasn't something that was my priority. As we had more time with the dogs, uh, I actually kind of expanded uh, one of my hobbies of photography and spent a lot of time walking along with him, um, taking pictures of the dogs, taking pictures of the scenery as we traveled different parts of the, the country to do some hunting trips. During that time, I just got more and more involved in training and ultimately in learning how to handle a dog. This year was actually my first year that I handled, trained and handled a dog in, in one of the tests, so that was, that was exciting. We got Blitz, and he was, he was a, a dog that kind of won my heart. I don't know, he's one of those cuddly boys. And um, so the, the dog training was kind of interesting. Um, I felt like I had to be so much more in the moment with handling a dog versus just standing back and giving advice. I was the one that was front and center. You know, and as far as training dogs goes, when I think back, one of the very first dog training events that we went to is through our local NAVTA chapter and um, I remember watching they did a demonstration of, a, of two Finnish dogs and watching them go through this whole process of the dog pointing and staying on point and remaining steady in the shot and the dog retrieving. I looked at my husband and I said have you ever seen a dog do this before? <laughs> And it was at that moment that we looked at each other like, we're going to do this. Deb and I have tried doing lots of different hobbies together. And we tried golf, we tried bicycling, we tried a lot of things. But the hobby that we share the, the most passion together about is dog training and handling these dogs. Um, it's something that we work together on go and take a dog to train a dog. We talk about what we're going to do on the drive down there when we're, you know, we go through the training scenarios and when we're coming home, we talk about how it all went. You know, it's just, it has become a, a, a hobby for us that we both can do equally as well. Um, and it's, it becomes, it's a lot of fun. It's, it, it, it adds a lot. My name is Joe Mella. I have been upland bird hunting uh, most of my adult life started out doing it with my dad when we were kids and we didn't hunt with dogs at that point. And it wasn't until I had started hunting again after going to school that in my life it was one of these circumstances where I began to realize it would be nice to have my own hunting dog and we, of course what you typically do under those circumstances is you think the best dog to get is the dog that all your buddies have. Fast forward to the late 2000s and we happened to be in Madison, Wisconsin, my wife and I, who we found out that Pheasant Fest was going on. We decided to go. So we went and we were of course going and looking at all of the dog breeds that I was familiar with. Near the end of the day we were walking down one of the aisles and at the end of one of the aisles I saw a dog that didn't look like anything else I'd ever seen before. Your eye was just drawn to the way that the dog looked because they're striking. They, they've got longer coats, they've got the long tails. You know, I've been hunting with Britneys and GSPs and they've got short tails and you see the long tail and you see the long ears and they're just, they're, they're just not something you typically see. It turns out they were coach long ears. first got the dog, you know, we, we brought home this cute little brown puppy and she was super snuggly and we got handed a packet of information and in that packet of information was, here's what you need to do if you want to certify your dog to be bred. I don't even think we knew what that meant when we agreed to it. That has become really important to us over the years as we've learned more about it. Um, we just feel like it's just the the, the, the training and the testing that has to happen in order to certify your dog for breeding, we feel just adds so much quality to the dog that you get at the end.
You know, beyond the, the dogs and, and what it's done for you know, us as a couple and having a hobby, I, I think that the, the camaraderie that we have through the club is just, it's so much more than what we would have ever imagined. Um, just the friends that we've made, the contacts, um, you know, different people that we've trained with and just have, you know, I think made some longtime friends.